served as the additional Chief Secretary, Industries, Investment Promotion and Commerce Department, Government of Tamil, Tamil Nadu during March 2020 to August 2023. He's been the additional Chief Secretary in the Finance Department and Pr Principal Secretary in the Housing and Urban Development and the Planning, Development and Special Initiatives Department. He was the founder, CEO of the Tamil Nadu Infrastructure Development Board. Uh, next on our jury, we have uh, Mr. Abhishek Singh. Uh, Shri Abhishek Singh is a career civil servant with 28 years of experience of governance and policy formulation. He specializes in the use of technology for improving governance. He is Additional Secretary, Ministry of Electronics and Information Technology, Government of India, with additional charge of President and CEO, National E-Governance Division. Uh, he leads major Digital India initiatives, including projects in the field of artificial intelligence and emerging technologies. He has also been assigned additional charge of CEO of Karam Yogi Bharat, a government company under Department of Personal and Training tasked with building a tech platform for capacity building of all civil servants. Uh, next in the jury, we have Mr. Harshjit Sethi. Um, Mr. Harshjit advises on investments in early stage businesses and is focused on fintech, uh, SAAS, and consumer internet sectors. He works closely with Darwin Box, Fresh. Fresh, fresh work, Skillmatic, Small Case, Tournament, and Vimo, among, amongst others. Most recently, he led PeakXV's investment in Sarvam.ai, which aims to develop the full stack for generative AI for India, ranging from research-led innovations in training custom AI models to an enterprise-grade platform for authoring and deployment. Uh, next, we have uh, on the jury Mr. Arpit Agarwal. Um, Mr. Arpit is an investment partner at Bloom Ventures. Um, he has been covering a variety of sectors for Bloom, currently focused deeply on climate tech, electric mobility, logistics, healthcare, and deep tech. Over the years, he has led investments into Spinny, Cashify, Battery Smart, THB, each of them leaders in their industry segments. He co founded Head Start Network, India's largest startup community, which touches more than 1 lakh entrepreneurs annually. He also co-created India Deep Tech and Industry Alliance for promoting deep tech startups. Uh, next in our jury, we have Mr. Howard Lacuna. Howard Lacuna is a senior program officer at the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, where his team is focused on scaling digital public infrastructures in LMICs and accelerating the impact of digital solution. His professional background is in technology development, systems design, AIML, and product management. Before BMGF, he was a technical program manager at Meta, working on cross-platform initiatives in the social impact division. Um, we, have, we will have Mr. Pankaj Thakkar joining us soon. Um, Mr. Pankaj is a tech evangelist with specialization in digital media strategies, digital marketing, and big data applications and analytics. Um, next uh, up, we have Mr. Anirudh Suri. Uh, Mr. Anrud Suri is the founding partner of India Internet Fund, a, a U.S. and India-based early-stage seed fund. He has also founded two startups, AKSMS.com, India's first web and mobile-based recommendation engine, and Findable, a hyper-local commerce platform focused on making shopping from physical stores easier. Um, he has previously served as a policy advisor to the Minister of State for Communications and Technology in the Government of India. So for this event, spanning from the time of registration, the AI Game Changers Award has garnered an overwhelming response from a diverse pool of startups. Um, post that, a review committee comprising members from government, civil society, academia, and industry meticulously evaluated the submissions. After detailed deliberation and assessment of innovative solutions presented by the startups, the review committee selected the top 10 startups. And these startups will be uh, presenting their pitch today. Uh, for the first pitch, we have Ariti Business Solutions Private Limited. I uh, would request the presenters to come up on the stage. Please be mindful of the time that you've been given, um, the 5 plus 3 format. Thank you. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, when do, when, uh, where's the timer? You're going to start it? Okay. Maybe I assume it started. Yeah. Good. So, uh, welcome everyone to Ariti Business Solutions. Ariti actually is a Greek word for passion and purpose in life or to achieve excellence. Uh, today the presenters include myself, Dr. Swapna Sen and Swapnil Lonkar. So what's the opportunity and what's the demography 
of our, the problem that we are trying to address. We are focusing on cattle as a segment and how do we bring technology adoption in the cattle segment. Look at it, how, we, how diverse and how large we are. We are the world's largest milk producers, more than 308 million cattle, 53 breeds across the country, 80 billion farmers serving dairy industry, 5% or as recently Dr. Uh, Mr. Manish Shah put it, 9.3 lakh crores of revenue coming from this source. The, whereas the growth which is affected because of COVID and various other ailments is falling short of the demand. This is a large opportunity. India is one of the largest producers of milk, largest consumers, and to a great extent, we are still having a demand gap which needs to be fulfilled. To this extent, uh, we looked at what are the challenges that the cattle industry or cattle as per, per se face. There are four major challenges. Number one, missed reproductions. Uh, farmers are not able to detect heat on time. They uh, miss the symptoms or sometimes they kind of do it at the wrong time and uh, artificial insemination goes waste. There's a high level of sickness and mortality. Almost uh, the cattle which uh, have sickness and mortality get recognized very late. Some of them actually then are incurable to some, some extent. Yield, I think we lag far below the world average. Of course, it has to do with breeds and genetics and many more pro aspects. So I'm not claiming that it's only because of the quality of feed or anything like that. But still, there's a significant gap as compared to other places. And there's absolutely no data available on the Indian breeds. I think these are the four challenges that we picked up to address. And we said, can we bring in a solution to this? So our solution, I'm going to play a very short video to explain it to you. Hi, this is Professor Marit Business Solutions, and this is Michael. We specialize in IoT-based cattle health monitoring sensor devices. As you can see behind me, we are installing a cattle neck bed over a cow. It's 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 same like our smart watches, but for cow. This device monitors over 10 parameters of each cow every 10 minutes and sends it to our central server. This data is fed to our unique algorithms which are then able to predict the possibility of any health issues such as high temperature, low rumination, high stress level, heat cycle, etc. This information is conveyed to Team Haribol as well as farmers for their timely actions and intervention. Thank you. So this is our solution. How does the solution work? I, we have given a small handout to you where on the second uh, sheet you can see how the solution works. The data is sent to a gateway the gateway to the uh, sensor can be a distance of up to 350 meters. From there, it works on our proprietary uh, engine, AI engine called Cynthia. And from, the, from Cynthia, we derive the insights, which are then presented to the farmers on either, if there are large farmers, then they have web apps and all of that. Otherwise, for small farmers on their mobile apps, this is available in local Indian languages. We have currently introduced seven local Indian languages, Hindi, Marathi, Tamil, Telugu, Kannada, Punjabi, Odia and we will keep on, exp uh, Gujarati, yeah, and some more. So we'll keep on expanding these languages. And these uh, notifications are supported by a group of veterinary experts who are available internally, who guide the farmers in case they are missing a symptom. And all of these testimonials which you can hear were also some of, the, some of these people also presented to Prime Minister uh, just two days back about the experience that they have with this solution. I'm today going to unveil what is our AI engine looking like. So what's unique about our solution is that it works across multiple breeds. Here are the three uh, leaders and founders. I'm one of them. Uh, we we have all come out of a very rich corporate experience. I worked with the Aditya Birla Group and prior to that Bajaj Auto, where I was instrumental in many transformational projects. My other co-founder, Mr. V. S. Sridhar, comes from the Tata Group, having led the VSNL integration and then Tata Communications. 
and the third co-founder comes from Godrej uh, with significant experience in finance and HR. We bring with us and with the team here right in, in front of you uh, strength in terms of technology, strategy, people, finance, entrepreneurship. But not only that, we also knew we, have, we need strong experts to support us. So two of the largest organizations available in India, Bharat Electronics, Bellop stands for Bharat Electronics Optronics. Bharat Electronics has tied up with us for manufacturing our solution at scale. And BIAF is the country's largest NGO on livestock management, uh, started and promoted by Mahatma Gandhi. So BIAF is invested into ARIT in making sure that this project or this solution is success and bringing many more interventions into this space of livestock management. These two are the partners who are supporting us significantly and taking us to where we would like to be. Um, we have received funding support. Uh, we have almost raised 1.2 million and they plan to raise 5 million. We have a huge set of investors on pool. Uh, I'm not going to read out the names. And our business model, so we have solutions, services, and dairy farm needs. Our unit economics is uh, very attractive with a 32% gross margin. Our per unit cost is around rupees 5,000 for the entire installation. And what's the long-term impact that we support? So we believe healthy and productive cattle can lead to and with a focus on sustainable environment. We have still not touched the biggest problem of methane emission and which we hope to address through our solution. Happy farmers and healthy families. That's the opportunity size in front of us. It's a very large opportunity. I think no one player can serve this market. There are many, multiple players needed, but it is a need of the hour and we hope we can deliver to that expectations. And here is a snap of the interaction the Prime Minister had with us and to, with the farmers. Uh, the, because of paucity of time, I'm not going to play, play it right now, but uh, this is available from Prime Minister's Instagram handle where he spoke to the farmers and talk, took their feedback directly. So that's from us. We are open to any questions that you might have. Um, I'll ask the first question. Uh, can you talk a little bit about what kind of traction you've received, how many units you've sold, and also, so one, that, and second, what do you think is the right price point at which you think the adoption will really uh, you know, go up exponentially. Is it 5,000 or is it cheaper? And if so, like, do you have a plan to get to that price point? I'll answer, no, I'll answer both these questions. The number one, uh, we launched this product in March 2023 on a commercial scale. Since then, 1,000 units are already in the market. The next 1,000 units have already been farmed out to potential customer, uh, to all the customers. So we will, uh, by end of uh, December, we'll have 2,000 units. Currently, we already have 1,000 units in the field, another 1,000 units in the field by December because uh, large customers have already ordered out. By end of March 2024, we intend to uh, bring in 10,000 units. That's our plan for this year, uh, which would generate a revenue of about 6.5 crores Indian rupees for this current year. The second question, what's the price point? So one of the questions that we have tried to always answer is price is determined, determined by the value that we generate. What's the value that we can generate for the farmers? And what is the affordability for that value that the farmer is willing to pay? I can tell you that uh, we estimate a potential annual saving of up to 70,000 rupees, Indian rupees. And we said we'll price ourselves at one-tenth of that price to be able to generate significant ROI for the farmers. So that is how we came to the price point of between 5,000 to 6,000. But uh, this is con consistent feedback coming in from large agencies like NDDB and others. Uh, we have tied up with Bell Optronics for the same purpose that you have actually cast for. And we try, uh, we believe that the target pricing between 3,500 to 4,000 is the absolute perfect price for a product like this. Can you talk a little bit about sort of distribution? Like how would you reach, uh, you know, in our country, we have many small farmers all over. How do you educate them on a product like this and how do you reach them? Uh, to sell a solution like this? Yeah. Uh, I'll make an attempt first to answer, and I'll also request my colleague Swapnil to come in for a second. Uh, so basically, I think one of the most important things is in Indian farmers' mindset. Trust is the number one aspect. Everything is bought and sold or accepted by trust. It's important to create those testimonials, those success stories around the farmers. It's not just bought on brand or prices and other strategies. It's very important to build trust. 
and that's something that we are engaged constantly. Our unique proposition of virtual care managers ensures that there's a constant engagement with the farmers who have purchased our product, and that is how we are building trust with the farmers. It's available through B2D segments. It is available through uh, um, large cooperatives, like uh, and Banas Dairy is looking at it. Nestle is already kind of accepted it. So there are large cooperatives who have started working with us, and that could be the other possibility of scaling up. NDDB is planning to take this up in a big way nationally. So we believe that this is the opportunity, but at the end of it, it has to be born out of trust. And Swapnil, do you want to add something? Yeah, sure. Uh, as we have spoken to the very, uh, many customers and got feedback from them, the awareness, uh, they, are, they are already looking for this kind of devices because they have faced a lot of uh, difficulties to manage the cow herds and everything. And uh, what uh, what difference uh, what difference make uh, that they are aware they are looking for this kind of product is they are emotionally connected to the cows which they are uh, which they are having in their farms. So yes, uh, we have really got good feedback from the farmers everywhere, and that's and, it. Thanks. And also, I would like to add we have our collaboration with Bayer, where we have a very extensive network of the AI agents, artificial insemination agents. So they are being trained with our solution to make their insemination a more success. So thousands of agents being taking our solutions across the farmers will actually make us make our solution reach the I means cornermost part of India. Thank you. It's okay. Thanks a lot. Thank, Thank you, you for your patient listening, and thanks for giving us this opportunity. Thank you. Um, for the second presentation and pitch, we have uh, Drona Maps Private Limited. Oh, wow, this moved ahead quickly. Uh, good morning, everyone. This is Ayushi, COO and co-founder of Drona Maps. Uh, we are a decision support platform to enable uh, decision making on the back of reality capture that's done with drones. We do integrate data with GIS, MIS, uh, project management, and other tools to be able to help people make that decision. Uh, the first question arises, why drones? Why do you need something like this? This is typically required where either we are dealing with very large parcels of land, uh, latest data is not available, and drones are an easy, inexpensive way to capture very high resolution data to be able to make these decisions. However, you will still end up with the problem of how to analyze this data, because over time, like this is leading to a large quantity of data that is starting to come in. So, like for example, I'm sure like a lot of you have heard about the high resolution mappings that are happening in India across like many thousands of villages. Typically, the problems that are arising is these are heavy processing. Uh, it's like people are unable to access them on browser-friendly formats and unable to use that within existing work streams. This is the problem we try to solve. Uh, our work has been published uh, at a population level. We have deployed UAVs and artificial intelligence with geospatial uh, intelligence integrated within it uh, for, if, for the state of Punjab, and this has been published in the compendium. Uh, by departments, uh, Department of Administrative Reforms. Uh, this basically talks about multiple use cases that we address within the same artificial intelligence suite. Uh, this includes property taxes for over 165 ULBs, uh, slum development for over 10 lakh people, COVID-19 response for uh, seven states in India, 133 districts, and uh, like also Amro towns and integration with geo databases for the same. Mondays and rural link roads and highways across the country. Um, typically, all of this is uh, sort of following this similar structure. Um, like at the bottom, you have data collection that is happening with a fleet of drones. We work with drone service providers who are collecting this data. We control how this data gets collected. So SOPs are typically defined by us, and we have systems in place to automatically check whether or not the data collected has, uh, is uh, following certain standards. Then we do map reconstruction, which is 3D and 2D maps, like high resolution out of it. Beyond this point, we use AI analytics in conjunction with legacy geospatial approaches to extract information from it. And then like this entire data set becomes a part of a dynamically updating geodatabase, which is shown at the end 
in a browser friendly dashboard format so the dashboards that you see here are for a highway use case that i'll jump into like a little bit later over over time like the screenshot that you have here is for slum development uh, for as i was saying earlier for 10 lakh individuals in punjab uh, over time we have seen an increase in the adoption of uh, internet ba internet based dashboard access for particularly this kind of data uh, from a business standpoint, we are usually working with a lot of private entities. Uh, we have integrations with SAP, ESRI, KPMG, and uh, we do have a mix of B2B and B2G clients who are uh, taking the solution at scale. Um, over a period of time, we are looking at the evolution of autonomy, starting from the hardware stage, which is where most companies are right now and uh, the way they are using AI right now. Uh, where we fall in is autonomous workflow, where we are integrating sensors, GIS, MIS, and a bunch of other data fusion that is happening. Uh, but what is still left is basically the ability to just hit a button uh, and the entire drone would fly on its own, collect data, the entire analysis would have on its own, and uh, actually be displayed on a dashboard. In the end, like uh, just understanding the drone industry a little bit, it's a $50 billion industry that's expected to grow. And uh, this is Boston Consulting Group. Uh, the estimates vary from uh, like uh, whichever entity. And uh, from a value addition standpoint, a lot of the work now is happening, uh, a major chunk of it is on the value adds and the SaaS side of it. Uh, from a competitive landscape standpoint, what we are looking at is cost versus stage of functional integration. Uh, most companies are actually on the first stage across the world, which is uh, hardware companies are uh, primarily uh, driving at getting the hardware into the roads, and which has happened to a large degree for major firms like Skydio, DJI, even Idea Forge in India. Then you have uh, reconstruction platforms, GIS and MIS platforms. A lot of these would be familiar names. Where we fall is basically an integration of all of this uh, value chain in uh, different uh, uh, bits and pieces. Um, what we are trying to do, so as I like initially mentioned earlier, like this is a use case that had come to us where drones are already existing on the ground. Uh, Countrywide, this is probably the largest operational network of drones being used to map the entire country's highways. They were collecting video data till this point onwards and doing annotations on top of it manually. Uh, where we came in was basically an align taking this alignment of data and changing the input formats from, Im uh, from video imagery to uh, just images captured in a certain orthomosaic pattern so that you can get a video and also a map out of it. These reconstructions were then used for AI ML of over 100 uh, features. And these features would then automatically be collected and like analyzed over a period of time on monthly mappings for under construction and uh, for uh, ONM, like roughly speaking, every six months. Uh, this is about, I believe, 3.6 kilom uh, lakh kilometers of data we are talking about. Um, from a drone, so this is the entire pipeline. I wouldn't de uh, delve too deep into it. It looks very similar to what we have talked about earlier. These are the uh, different suites that uh, exist, the uh, under construction, ONM, plantations, road safety, uh, black spots, and we have also allowed for actually correcting the data. No AI is perfect. So we have created systems around it which make sure that this data can be corrected by the experts. So a riverine bridge, for example, is not misdiagnosed as a minor bridge, and these corrections would then become part of the tra uh, retraining data set. Uh, on the Gen AI side, we are including, and this is something that we had started experimenting with early on in COVID as well. Uh, basically, all this information also goes into an LLM, which is enabling you to make decisions uh, based on simulations that are happening like uh, at the back end. So for example, whether or not to have a lockdown, whether a two-day lockdown works or a three-day lockdown works, and this is working on a spatial uh, level. These are just screenshots of like what it looks like on the end. Like uh, you have operations in main potholes and without potholes after they have been uh, uh, they've been worked upon plantations and gathering of data for all of the highways. And uh, this is like an average uh, understanding of how the data flow is happening. Um, these are the checks in place, the reconstruction mechanism. This is the main AI engine, uh, which is uh, being used for uh, training and retraining of data as well. And then you have the final uh, act, uh, like retraining data being generated both by ground truthing and also by um, data collection on the ground. 
So uh, that's us. It's a, we are a very small team of AIML and geospatial engineers. Uh, Utkarsh and I am uh, both co-founders who have started this company. We are Forbes 30 under 30. We studied at Johns Hopkins, came back to India, started this. We specialize in bringing emerging tech to population scale. And um, yeah, and we do have uh, connects with our alma mater still, and we bring uh, the expertise. So we are, we are passionate about bringing emerging technology to the most rugged use cases in India. Thank you so much. Hi, Aishi. it in such a way that we can uh, work with multiple clients. So as of right now, we work with enterprises who have uh, vested interests, like for example, ESRI, KPMG, system integrators, all of these uh, like enterprises would have vested interests and clients in multiple portfolios where we can scale horizontally, and that has been uh, what has been working very well thus far. Uh, however, we do maintain our own like uh, sales pipelines as well. So what's the business model here? How do you make money? Uh, we charge on a, de uh, I'm sorry, uh, yeah, now I could see who is asking the question. So we charge on a deployment basis, uh, typically speaking. So we release the platform for a reconstruction pipeline and uh, realize that for something like this, it uh, is probably required with very specialized organizations. So usually it's B2B, B2G. Uh, usually it's on-prem. Uh, the largest part of it is licensing fee, which would be for uh, a CR or plus. And then we would charge a variable quantity for per kilometer of data. So for example, the highway example you see, uh, we get paid for every kilometer of highway analyzed on a monthly basis. So the average is somewhere around uh, 20,000 kilometers on a monthly basis. 20,000 rupees a kilometer? Uh, no, we charge uh, around 1,000 rupees per kilometer. So 20,000 into, yeah. What's the revenue ARR if you have any? So uh, for the first few years, 2019 onwards, we have been cash flow positive. Uh, for, uh, and uh, we have, I guess this question would also come, so I'm answering it beforehand. Uh, we have seen a split of 70, 30 uh, in our revenue on uh, 2020. Uh, so private was 70%, 30% was government. Uh, during COVID, this completely shifted to 80-20 with more in favor of government. Now we're like sort of coming to a 50-50 split again. Um, our revenue has been increasing 2x every year, roughly speaking. This year, I'm expecting uh, a revenue of around 4 CR, but a jump to an order book of around 15 CR for next year. Thank you. Can you talk a little bit about some of the other players? Like, is it really true that there's no competition here? I wouldn't say there's no competition. Like if you bring in a, uh, if somebody had to replicate the entire offering, they will have to bring in a lot of players with bits and pieces available. So uh, for example, uh, in the US there is Drone Deploy, uh, which is the largest provider of B2C uh, drone reconstruction. And uh, the AI bit of it is not as mature because it's largely aligned towards uh, a develop, developed country, uh, smaller data set. The way India is using drones is slightly different than how developed countries are using them in terms of scale, uh, primarily because of the need involved in it. And the other side of your question is like, what about like players in India? Uh, most of them uh, typically are not working. Uh, they started with drones and services. So uh, largely speaking, the AI segment of it has very few players who are as yet doing like uh, data integrations and AI segment. Uh, a lot of the uh, off-the-shelf AI algorithms are also only trained on uh, satellite data. So you will need a very unique set of opportunities to be able to actually do this uh, specifically. Yeah. All right. Uh, thank you so much, Ayushi. Thank you so much for your time. Um, 
our next presenter and pitch is from uh, Gen Robotics Innovation Private Limited. Request the participants to please stick to the time limit given. Hi, good morning. Uh, myself, Afsal Utikal. I am the co-founder and uh, uh, director of Gen Robotics Medical. So, uh, like, uh, before getting into the, uh, like, uh, product, we would like to tell about a small story that how robotics changed the uh, shape of Indian uh, clean tech industry. So, uh, we started with building uh, robotic exoskeleton and uh, we were thinking about how robotics can help humanity in a better way. So, we came to know about that technology is rushing into outer space and still nobody is looking into the depth of manhole that how people are entering into the manhole and cleaning this dirty job. So, uh, we thought of making, solving this using robotics long back in 2018. So, our uh, Honorable Prime Minister launched the product called Bandicoot into India for cleaning manholes. So that is around, this is the uh, change that we try to bring that uh, the man who is singing in the manhole is uh, converted to a robotic operator using a Bandicoot technology. So this has been serving uh, nearly 20 states in India and uh, it is actively uh, supporting uh, Swachh Bharat mission, the country's vision of making India uh, the cleaner one. And we are uh, very glad to receive the National Startup Award in 2020 for uh, bringing this revolution of uh, changing manholes to roboholes. So uh, coming to the uh, story, like, uh, we never stop thinking about how we can uh, uh, solve the most pressing social issues in our uh, society using robotics. And uh, we thought of making useful the robotic exoskeleton that we had developed from our uh, uh, long back in our college, making it very useful to the uh, society. So we came to know about a most pressing social issue and a most pressing unattended issue called um, gay disability. So gay disability is something called that is happening due to um, uh, mostly uh, neuro disability. It, it comes under a neuro disability sector. So that is, uh, we, uh, it happens due to stroke, uh, spinal cord injury, uh, like uh, Parkinson's, uh, like this. So, so what is happening right now is like in India, nearly like 13 million gay disability patients are there in India. And nearly 20 million uh, stroke patients are there. And that is not the story of uh, other countries as well. And this is a global issue as well. And conventionally what is happening uh, right now is that um, the current uh, treatment method is that two therapists will uh, ha help them uh, to train walking the patients. So in the conventional treatment, like uh, the treatment is the uh, basic thing that giving uh, the patient the uh, human level walking, like uh, training the patient for uh, learn the how he want to walk and all. So what happens is the brain is that neuroplasticity will achieve. So for that the current treatment method is that uh, two therapists will help them to coordinate their hip, knee and ankle joints to making them walk and uh, learn the walking. So in the conventional method like it is very limited on accuracy level, it is very limited on the number of steps they can put and it is very difficult to repeat the uh, same pattern. So we thought of making uh, like uh, this into uh, solve this issue in a two-step level. One is solve the issue of uh, giving the most natural gait pattern using robotics. And the second level is introducing AI into this for giving the most natural gait pattern for a personalized uh, rehabilitation. So uh, like uh, it is like uh, different people will have required different gait patterns. So we introduced uh, the most advanced AI gate trainer. So we call it as G-Gator. And um, we launched, that is, uh, it is in last October, 2020 October, into the market. And it has been approved by Central Drug Control Authority. 
and uh, also our army design bureau has uh, recognized the design so how ai is helping the and robotics is helping the gate training so like a highly accurate natural gate pattern we can provide through um, ai and we can able to maintain like a consistency and accuracy in the gate pattern like a for therapists and doctors, they will get better monitoring and uh, better advice on the treatment methods. And uh, the efforts, very simply we can say, if in the normal conventional way, uh, uh, we, the, we can't understand how he is putting an effort, we, can, we are not able to understand his improvement and all. And we have added a lot of safety features for the patient safety as well. So how, basically how AI is providing the um, uh, help in the uh, physical therapy. So like uh, we introduced AI for understanding the gait analysis and uh, also with the AI we are able to pro provide the most personalized gait training. And not only AI, we are introduced VR technology, mostly this person, these people will be bedridden for a long uh, time and there will be lack of motivation. And we introduced the most uh, new technology called G-Plot these movements and all things are introduced using the pneumatic technology and that is first time in the country. And these are major clients, SP Welford Hospital, Astro Group, uh, Tunnel Brain and Medicity and General Hospital. Uh, mostly our business are happening with B2B and B2G. And we have a sales model on outright sales model. Nearly, we have done nearly four installation in a year. Uh, nearly one, mil uh, one million steps, robotic steps has provided through uh, G Gator and this small video. The true freedom of life lies in the ability to move one's body independently and unrestrictedly. Yet, this freedom of mobility is being challenged by the increasing number of people affected by gait disabilities. In India, 13 million people live with gait disabilities, with over 8 lakh in Kerala alone. Shockingly, there are only 0.59 physiotherapists for every 10,000 people across the country, highlighting the immense challenges faced by those in need of mobility assistance. However, this cannot be forever. In the journey to solve issues existing in our society with robotic solutions, we have engineered the ultimate robotic gait rehabilitator, g -Gator, to guide you towards your dream of walking again a reality. g -Gator is designed for advanced robotic gait training, restoring mobility for those with impairments by integrating AI, robotics and G-plot exoskeletons. g -Gator enables comfortable therapy sessions to both patients and therapists, enhancing their quality of life. Partnering with major healthcare providers including Asta Mother, SP Wellfoot, General Hospital Trivandrum, and Tunnel Brain and Spine Med City, we envision to fill the gap in the physical medicine and rehabilitation and make robotic rehabilitation accessible to all people living with gait disabilities. GGATA assures a novel rehabilitation experience to patients, therapists, and doctors. Together, let's harness the power of robotics to advance healthcare for the well-being of humankind. So, uh, we wish to uh, explore from India to the world and make the Indian healthcare robotics the best in the world. And that is our long-term vision. Thank you. Yep. It's really a nice initiative. Thank you, sir. And uh, so how much is the cost of uh, treatment on an average per patient through this G-Gator? Um, we are actually given to multiple entities right now from 
uh, NGO, government, and private hospitals. So they they are giving in a different way. Like um, through a government, it is giving at free of cost, and uh, through NGO, they starts with per day session nearly thousand rupees per session, and uh, in major healthcare, it's up to fifteen thousand they are giving as a package for foreign patients from abroad and all. Okay, and uh, on an average, how many sessions are required per patient? Uh, nearly 20 to 40 sessions uh, for uh, giving the brain that consistency and uh, nearly uh, 20 minutes per day. Uh, we can treat 16 patients on a uh, day shift. Okay, so it is, will be nearly around 30,000 rupees per patient for, right? Nearly, yeah. yeah. Yes, sir. Right. Almost a follow-up on this on his question. Can you talk a little bit about the demand for this solution? Sorry. Can you talk about the demand? Um, it's like um, uh, we introduced that in. We are from the south part of India, and uh, uh, we were a small team uh, on the general robotics medical. So we thought of concentrating it on Kerala market initially. So that becomes a huge uh, uh, impact. Like. Um, um, the PMR department, th th those who give us this treatment, physical medicine and rehabilitation department. So, uh, so we are trying to bring that awareness to this particular department because they are not having enough tool to elevate the existing th therapy and this thing and all. So we done some small awareness campaign and things like that. And uh, all this entity, you can notice that from uh, government NGO and uh, major health groups are. Uh, trying to put investing on this particular um, uh, department to enhance and all. So we believe that this is going to be a new uh, emerging area and uh, we believe that nearly um, 250 to nearly 600 crores market in, in India itself for the uh, advanced uh, version and uh, yeah. So to, sum to summarize on that point, as you know every radiology department needs a CT who is specialized on that. So coming ahead, uh, every rehabilitation department who specialized needs a gigator. That's it. Can you talk a little bit about sort of how you're using AI in your solution? I mean, we get the robotics and the VR part, but can you talk a little bit about what AI you're using okay. and how you're using it? So basically, uh, we made it simple. Like, um, for to understand a particular human walking, there are di different parameters, like uh, his range of motions, walking step length, and uh, like firmer length this kind of thing. So we uh, uh, nearly we took uh, four to five years of research to bring this uh, innovation. So major part of the in, uh, research is went for uh, creating that trained model. So the trained model have the data of different type of uh, like uh, humans walking pattern. Like the walking pattern is different for, uh, we, we call it as gait cycle. So the gait cycle is different for different persons. So we made a data model and uh, it is having an AI algorithm that predicts uh, the data received from the uh, exoskeleton and understand which type of gait is required from that algorithm and it provides the most uh, human natural gait pattern. So how many can you produce in a year and what's the capacity required? So currently, um, uh, from this financial year onwards, we are trying to expand to the Indian other states and markets. So currently, we have a, a capacity. Uh, currently, what is happening right now is that we are giving a three months of time for production in an advanced uh, PO. So uh, we are trying to understand that how the Indian market is responding and all. So uh, we have a capacity nearly 250 to 250 robots per year to produce and all because we have a plan already for developing robots for clean tech and sanitation and all. So the capacity is like we can produce nearly 10 to 15 in a month for Gigator. Yeah. And what's the cost of each one of them? Um, we are selling it in like a, a different model. Like um, there's a platform model and we, uh, that is a higher model that is having all the AI features and all. So the price varies between 1.5 CR to 2.2 CR. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, yeah. Jai Hind. Uh, yeah, excuse me. One more, please. So the, this 1.5 CR is the market price or the production cost of it's one a, machine? It's a market price, sir. And uh, what's the production cost of this one machine? Uh, 
that uh, means i just wish to know the percentage of the margin which you are having yeah this is yeah, like um, like um, what we can say yeah when it comes to 30%. 30%, yeah. 30%. Yeah. Right. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you, Thank you so much. Um, the next pitch um, by, is by uh, Nine India Science and Technologies Private Limited. Good morning. So good morning, everyone. I very, very much appreciate the, uh, the conversations that are happening in the panels downstairs and all the dignitaries and officials who've come from all over the world uh, to Delhi and this amazing auditorium. I also want to thank all the, the jury members for your time and your patience. Uh, very briefly about the company, I'm introducing Nayan. I'm the co-founder for Nayan. I have Tushar Morea from IIT Delhi also co-founding Nayan. We are representing a company based out of Delhi. We are headquartered in Delhi and a subsidiary in uh, Dubai as well. Currently, Nayan is uh, spread across 17 cities. We are focused on the model and the market of visual data collection across various territories of the world. So what we collect, everything from advertising to road defects to traffic violations to safety to various mobility issues, and we collect them using an arsenal of cameras on every fleet and we collect them through our own manufactured dash cams, as well as now drones integrated through multiple uh, freelance sources. Currently, we are in an order book of 19 crore in the last three months itself. Uh, we are raising around 14 crore, that's about $1.5 million, out of which uh, 10 crore rupees has already been uh, uh, received from various uh, big investors. Uh, briefly about the journey, so we began, uh, the company began with myself driving an Uber. So I wanted to explore what is the, the need of a common man, the lowest earning wage groups of the country of every discipline. What is the need, how much money can they make? So I did this experiment for three months and the journey began into understanding that a driver actually does not make a lot of money. So Ola, Uber, Swiggy, Zomato people on the roadways, they're some of the lowest earning people across the globe. And that is me and that's my car. So we decided to take on an Uber-ish sort of a model wherein the lowest economy can fuel the biggest of cities and governments and departments. So one of the, the systems that we designed is now covering multiple cities. This is one example and this is one lady in Bangalore. Uh, my background is in robotics and artificial intelligence. I graduated Georgia Tech in 2011. And uh, this is my third company. Also, uh, we are also now, uh, some of the biggest customers including DARPA and US Defense Services, we uh, did a lot of very uh, interesting work for them. Happy to talk that offline. Uh, the, the power in the USP of Nayan is the ability to address all the cameras that are even in your pocket. So today, if you go online and type in Nayan in Play Store, download the app, put it on your car while you go back home, automatically you'll get points for every data point that you collect that is servicing one municipality or traffic or some of the other. So we integrate all the data points. There's a lot of business to be done for a lot of savings that a lot of insurance companies, B2B players, governments, all of them are doing. The collection model is very simple. Collect the data, enhance the data, deliver the data. And the pipeline continues. We are now nearly in 17 cities with around 40 in pipeline, a number of fleets, both from Ola, Uber, Swiggy, Zomato, all the low income wage groups of the country. All the fleets are our partners, every DTC bus. So we're integrating more cities as we go. As well as all the women players. So all the data collection that happens through a social empowerment uh, mission for us, 90% of our data enrichment happens through all the women in villages. So low income group women and we supply them with an application and they help enrich the data that we fuel the AI with. This is our impact to the society. We have 70 plus patents, half of them are already granted both in India, US and major markets. Uh, we are the number one IP holder at our stage. A very quick brief video of how the system works. So this is uh, interesting to note that uh, there are multiple issues, this is Delhi. If you identified a few, let's play a few. So traffic violations, municipal issues, vehicles overloading. This is a typical daily scenario for a driver and all of us going back and forth from home. Overloading of goods, wrong side driving, municipal issues, infrastructure damage, safety, violations, road surfacing, red lights not working, portholes. 
the same situation applies to all subcontinent countries, the same in Africa, same in all uh, midtown, downtown areas in the US. It is not a isolated problem in India. If you can collect data in large scales, you can automate municipalities, get the O&M cost of municipalities under control. So our biggest force has been to be part of the O&M infrastructure of every single city. Consume that 1% to 10% of a city, the numbers are staggering. And the, the fact that we've got 19 crores in the last three months is uh, resolute. So this is the data collection for municipalities. Collect through fleets, no capex, deliver the data, and let the owner of the city be controlled. Insurance companies, all the defects in all the vehicles, all the fraud happening in the insurance sector, each one of it, collect the data simple and deliver the data on demand. Traffic violations, we are now partnered with so many uh, departments in the, in the country. There's so many of these cameras, all crowdsourced. If you have a camera on top of a building for your own safety, lend it to a city. Allow them to safeguard you and everybody else and catch things and you get rewards in return and the city saves capex, so tax money gets saved. The same in Dubai, we have released this system in Dubai as well. Dubai police with IBM was our customer. IBM was our biggest B2B customer till date. And the same system, it's very crowdsourced. You can add all these cameras. The system has been deployed in several cities. So there's a municipal map of multiple cities and how we collect and isolate issues pan city for an ONM model for a municipality. Roadways, traffic situations. The system works very agnostically. This is a normal road. And as you move to an Uber guy, he is analyzing the road while he's driving and picking up his customers. Very economical, no extra capex needed. Same for G20, we did a survey from the airport till the uh, Pragati Madan and found out the areas with the maximum greenery for dignitaries. Very simple, a normal bike guy, Uber guy, driving and collecting data. Pipeline is closed from collections, retraining, deep learning, and then redeployment. This is our patent as well, deployed to multiple different countries and multiple patents uh, on the same. The cost is very nominal because the IP is ours, we don't license, everything is ground up. So its cost is very nominal, 200 rupees a kilometer, 200 rupees an hour. The data for these different industries are what we're doing at the moment. Deployment uh, for us uh, span all the cities and we're very proud of our, all the fleets. They are an inspiration to me to become an Uber driver as well. And personally, we enjoy working with the fleets of the country. They help us explore the whole country. Data is uh, Pokemonized, so the Pokemon model applies. Your system, your app, today if you go back home, you'll collect points for every issue that your phone detects. And these uh, data points go back to the city, you get rewards. That's our astounding team, Tushar, my co-founder from IIT Daily also. He is a part of the AI and leading the entire infra. Uh, all our investors as well. We've uh, got some very good uh, investors. They've guided us all the way through our journey. We also funded through syndicates and our venture capital will be next for us, seed round. Uh, we are exploring a market size of 75 billion in India itself. We focus India and Middle East currently. And uh, most of our customers are spread across cities, drones, logistics companies, and some of the other ones. We've done about 6.9 crore rupees in contracts and 19 crore in orders currently. We'll end the year at 6.1, uh, raising a $1.5 million round. Unit economics, uh, it's, it's the best. Uh, we'll give you statistics offline, but the yellow parts are the areas we want to be for the next year. We've won some of the, the biggest awards from Mahua, Ministry of Urban Affairs, PMO Office, for ground root, low cost empowerment of people and allowing cities to get help from the lowest economies of scale. So it's helped us win a lot of uh, acclimation. A lot of articles have released on how this is helping cities and how they're solving issues. So it's a, a very societal saving problem and we've deployed in many countries as well, both in Middle East as well, we launched last year. Uh, Thank you for all the uh, patience, and I'm happy to answer any questions. The, the obvious question is about uh, privacy, so please answer. So what happens with under the local laws of the country, as well as uh, GFRA, GFRA, both in Europe and the US, you are not allowed to identify someone. So no personally identifiable information. But municipal is mostly concerned about road potholes, garbage. So as you drive through the system, the AI on the apps is detecting the things of interest for the end customer. Could be a pothole garbage. The rest of it is obfuscated, delivered, obfuscated to the end customer. So there's no identity theft or 
even though if you hack the link and you get the data, everything is already blurred and the links expire. There's a lot of security protocols that we've put in place. So privacy is, is taken care of. Unless it's a government department, like a security department, asking for someone's picture, then we have uh, that tool. I, I'm sure you guys must be tracking the EU AI app. From, they just had something big on using people's face and using that for demographics. Uh, and as you know, some of those laws may be adopted in other countries, so it's kind of watch the privacy stuff. Oh, the, you mean our networked people who are working with us? Correct, and just being able to detect people's face, even though you're not processing that data, just because your system is capturing it, you m it, might, get it, it might get you in trouble. Oh, uh, so, uh, uh, so it's similar to the GFRA guidelines permitted for Google Street View in India and multiple countries, even Europe. So you can see Google Street View, but all the faces and plates will be blurred. So the laws have allowed street view and survey of cities without identification of data. Uh, the, we've also done one deployment uh, pilot in Austin, uh, as well as one in Vienna. Uh, even in Africa, Nigeria, we're doing one pilot right now. Uh, I, so long as the faces and the plates of any identifiable information is not present, the data can be released to a focused one-on-one -on -one, uh, uh, customer. Uh, but we're also doing advertising. So a lot of advertisements, Pan City, are going to B2B. It's purely McDonald's versus Raymond versus Maneva and Nike versus Adidas. So you can do a lot of comparative analysis for data. But So it's not restricted to only O&M for business, uh, governments or anything on those lines. It's a, it's a SaaS platform, build for a kilometer, build for a data point, and delivered for whatever you want. It could be advertising, could be potholes, could be a school bus driving crazy, your own uh, maybe car getting stolen. So it's, it's very f focused on end-to-end -end customers. Purely SaaS. Right? Hi, I'm Meilin Fung from the People Centered Internet. Um, your answer about privacy talked about you know, an anonymity, but you also, in your presentation, talked about insurance companies, traffic violations, yes. uh, clearly for monitoring those kinds of things. You have to actually track people. I wonder actually how much you are using or learning from what's going on in India with the data empowerment protection uh, architecture, DEEPA, so and, and how this all works together. Very good. Uh, so that question uh, can be answered simply that traffic violations are only done for a government traffic department asking for that part. We normally at Nayan focus on municipals, B2Bs, uh, survey of defects, infrastructure, and so on. That is a native business, uh, uh, advertising and so on. But if the government players come on board and they said, we are spending 10 crore rupees, could you do it in one crore? Can you help us fight these traffic violations? Then a system for them is designed, deployed on site with a micro cloud position on their premises. The data goes to them. We deploy a team there as a, as a single unit. We've done this same for Ahmedabad, now Bangalore and some other cities. So it's, it's not, we are not doing it voluntarily. It's done on demand on the customer side. What we do, we play Pokemon. So collect defects on issues and advertising and deliver it to businesses. Nothing to do with uh, traffic violations or, or safety or any of those, unless there's a government asking for it. So what is in it for people who are collecting data? I'm here, right in front. So, oh, hi. <laughs> So uh, data collection, you get points uh, depending on the demand. So let's say if Nike wants to fight Adidas or Maneva wants to find uh, Raymond, they want to know, I'll give you points every time you find a Raymond advertisement on the roadway. So if your phone I'm detects- I'm talking about the potholes and- So if the municipality wants potholes on a priority against garbage, so the point system for potholes is higher. If the garbage, system goes up because some event is coming up, the points for the garbage goes higher. So it's a stock market. So as so, And what do, how do I redeem those points? You redeem in cash on a daily basis directly to your bank accounts or wallet or Paytm wallet. And municipality pays for it? Nayan pays for it. The municipality pays Nayan to and manage the, the fleets and so on. How much is that part of your cost? Uh, so we net every project. Uh, 
I'll disclose, we are netting above 50%. Uh, the margins are significantly high. Uh, our gross is almost 80% plus. Uh, so the net is very high. Uh, all the data collection is actually very, very nominal because there's no capex. The data belongs to the fleet and the fuel belongs to him, car belongs to him, phone belongs to him. It's only an app that he downloads, uh, so it's very low cost for us. And points system can be kept as low, 20 pesa, 5 pesa per point and so on. But they accumulate about 5 to 10 percent of their uh, monthly income on a month. So it's very catchy, very sticky. So, yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, next up, we have uh, Neodocs Healthcare Private Limited. Again, just a reminder to just try and stick to time. Hi, good morning, everyone. My name is Nikunj Malpani. I am one of the co-founders of Neodocs. We are leveraging AI to build low-cost diagnostics on any phone. Neodocs was started by three of us, Anurag, Pratik, and myself. All three of us are alumni of IIT Bombay. Now, even though we are from the same college, our experience is very different. Anurag has been a three-time medtech entrepreneur. He's built two other healthcare startups previously, one in uh, software, one in hardware. Pratik, on the other hand, has been involved with AIML. He's worked with leading US banks, helping them solve for credit card fraud detection models. I, on the other hand, worked at a consulting firm called Bain. And, uh, in this endeavor, we've been guided by some amazing advisors, one of them being Dr. Rohit Shivastav, who till recently was the HOD of Biomedical Department at IIT Bombay. Now we all know health tracking is becoming a cultural phenomenon globally. We are exercising more often, we're taking more healthy alternative supplements, and we're testing more often. And no, this is not just a Western phenomenon. This is happening in India as well. We're getting proactively tested more often. Home sample collection is increasing. We all want results faster and faster. And at the same time, the diagnostics industry has evolved in a very, very interesting manner. 50 years ago, diagnostic labs were set up. Around 15 years ago, we started having this home sample collection model where a phlebotomist comes home, collects a sample. 10 years ago, we started having fitness wearables. And today, the time is right to build your own diagnostics on the phone. And we're leveraging AI to replace the lab machine with a phone camera while retaining the same clinical grade accuracy. This is how it works. We have a test card. You can see it in my hand also. It's this tiny little test card. This one is a urine based one. You dip the bottom part in urine, take it out, click a photo using our app, and in 30 seconds you have the results. It's as easy as that. We're currently live with multiple test products. In urine, we have something for early detection of chronic kidney disease. We have something for instant detection of urinary tract infection. We are also detecting high-risk pregnancy. And next, we are moving into blood. We are building various things like vitamin D, lipid profile, HbA1c, also other tests in urine and saliva. My colleague Yash will pass on a few samples now. Essentially, we are building a tech platform that can read almost 80% of diagnostic biomarkers using a smartphone. One of the interesting customer acquisition strategies we're adopting is a AI-based smart report analyzer. You can upload any medical report. Within a matter of seconds, we revert back with a much more simplified version along with non-medical next steps. Talking a little about our uh, go-to-market strategy, we are heavily B2B focused as of now. We are working with doctors, pharma companies, with some of the leading names like AstraZeneca, Bayer, uh, Cipla. We are also working with the government, the government of Maharashtra, government of Rajasthan. We are also partnering with a lot of other healthcare companies, nutraceuticals, fitness, women health, and also we have presence across uh, e-commerce. I'll deep dive into two of them. We partner with pharma companies, we find synergies with pharma companies, we partner with them. Uh, their fleet on street help us distribute these kits to thousands of doctors across India. This enables doctors to do low-cost, uh, instant testing in their clinic, essentially diagnosing more and more patients. The market size increases. 
Doctors are happy, pharma companies are happy, we are happy. So this is how the model works over here. Second, with the government, we have deployed our kids at more than 150 PHCs and primary health centers and sub-centers across Nasik in Maharashtra and Ladnu in Rajasthan. We are doing paid projects. We have identified more than 2,500 high-risk pregnancies, more than 400 chronic kidney disease patients. Uh, we've been backed by some leading investors like Omidyar, Titan Capital, Nine Unicorns, uh, founder of Cloud9 Hospitals, founders of 1MG, uh, Apollo Hospitals, Narayana Healthcare. Thank you. I've got time remaining, so I'll use it for a couple of more things. So this is how the technology works. We basically are using two kinds of technology, lateral flow assay and calorimetric assay. Now, both of these are based on color changes or intensity changes, which till now used to happen in a lab machine, and we are replicating the same thing using a smartphone camera. Two of the major risk factors is external lighting conditions can vary, and second, phone camera lenses are different. So we are using AIML in order to standardize all of these images and give you the right value. We use two different applications. One is for the customer. The one you see on the left is for the customer. If you take this test home, you do this uh, at home, that's the one for you. And the second one is for uh, healthcare providers, doctors, paramedics, or their assistants. They do the test and they share the report with you. Uh, we have filed for various patents, we've received all the certifications. Of course, after we did that, uh, the question was about accuracy. We've done a clinical validation study at Cyan Hospital in Mumbai, achieving a specificity of 99% and sensitivity of 96%. Another study is currently ongoing with AstraZeneca at Manipal Hospital in Bangalore. Thank you so much. Yeah, hi. So the, is it only for the urine test or blood too? No, we're building for blood too now. We started with urine because no pricking involved, easy to collect. In blood, we are building for the private market, vitamin D, HbA1c, uh, uh, lipid profile, and for the public market, sickle cell anemia, hemoglobin. In fact, we have a stall uh, in the other auditorium at G4. We are doing a live uh, hemoglobin finger prick test also over there on the phone. Sure, I would like to visit over there also. And uh, so how would you like to go with the blood tests? So it's a finger prick test, similar to how uh, diabetic people do with a glucometer, except right. that there's no glucometer, there's only a strip and your phone. So we've done away with any external piece of hardware in this. Okay. And uh, the accuracy test will come afterwards, right? Once you are done with that. Yes. In the blood yeah. ones, we'll, once we launch, we'll do the accuracy testing. And uh, how much is your margin for this? You, uh, you are selling it for in the market for? So the MRP of the one you're holding in your hand is 249. Our cost is around 16 rupees, so we are operating at very good margins. However, our majority business is B2B, so we give it at between 80 rupees to 100 rupees, still operating at a very healthy margin. All right, great. Thank you. Maybe a question on your, on your revenue, right? It's, it seems like if this works the way you mentioned, 99% and 96%, then you could essentially scale in world domination, right? How are you guys thinking about scaling this solution outside of India or maybe even within India in other states? So one thing we understand, we're working in healthcare and it's a fairly innovative product. So there's trust, education, awareness. Second, there's medical licenses also. So we are trying to build via doctors so that that trust and awareness is built. So for example, with AstraZeneca, we're scaling in other international markets. So we're exploring Vietnam, Cambodia, uh, Malaysia, Philippines, Sri Lanka, and so on. Recently, we were at Slush in Helsinki. So also exploring European partnerships over there. Doing some pilots in Africa as well. I see. Yes, same accuracy, because it's urine samples, and essentially it's, we work on photospectrometry or calorimetry. So it doesn't really differ across uh, different continents or Suggestion is go direct B2C. Sorry? Suggestion is to go direct B2C. Doctors, trust, all that is really, you know, it can be avoided and the price can be brought down to 80 for 
a general patient also. Okay, uh, I have one more. Yeah, here, yes. Yeah. yeah. So, how are you planning to compete with uh, other uh, market players? For example, those uh, having those uh, in the market, uh, the pregnancy test kits are there and the diabetes kits are there. So, how are you planning to compete with those? It's funny and that because you Because the price seems to be relatively cheaper as compared to yours. Yes, yes. It's funny that you mentioned that. Just last month, we launched our own version of a pregnancy test kit. One of the major problems with pregnancy tests is that a lot of people are unsure whether they have done the test correctly, what does a faint line mean, and so on. I'm sure all the recent married couples might agree to that. Hence, we've launched a test kit extremely similar to Prega News, that is the market leader, except that we have a free app on top of that. So this one is not a pregnancy test. Uh, here, people assume us to be competing with diagnostic labs. The pregnancy tests are much cheaper, and that's a different test. And the diabetes one also? So in diabetes, we are not doing uh, blood glucose. We'll be doing HbA1c, which is the right metric, the three-month average. The glucose is a very fickle parameter. It can, from morning to evening also, it can rise up and down. So we'll be doing HbA1c in that. Okay. Hi. I uh, co-wrote a paper with the principal investigator for the EU Biobank. And it seems like the possibility of using the data you're collecting for scientific research could be extremely powerful for global health. I'm just wondering if you consider that. Yes, absolutely. So for example, we went to Finland just a couple of weeks ago and met with the Indian embassy over there. And we realized how rich digital data set Nordic countries have. So definitely looking at that kind of a partnership. And it helps that margins in those areas are much better than in India. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Um, next up, we have Newsera Tech Labs Private Limited. Good morning, esteemed jury and fellow innovators. I represent Newsera, and we are revolutionizing news with AI. The larger vision at Newsera is to envision the community which is informed and connected. My name is Shrey Sharma. I'm the founder and CEO of Newsera. Little bit of a background about me. So I graduated from IIT Kharagpur. I did my uh, bachelor's and master's in computer science, where I presented my original research paper on analyzing facts and knowledge bases. I designed a completely new ad-serving platform for a SFA startup, and we were acquired by AWS. I designed the recommendation system at Pinterest back in 2019, which powers 40% of their website. At Newsera, we have an amazing team of software engineers, fact-checkers, designers, and HR admin. So almost one in two Indians every day are affected by fake news. People are not trusting the traditional media. The trust is declining. Due to the lack of personalization, we end up by having either too much information or too little of an information. All of these factors combined 
are driving down the news literacy to an all-time low metric. Introducing news GPT. This is the world's most advanced AI system designed for news. News GPT is a LLM-based state-of-the-art solution. It understands what the news is from the internet. It recognizes what a news content is. It does the extraction. It maintains the history of publishers to determine their trust score. We have built some amazing guardrails here to prevent fake news, to reduce bias, hallucinations, to improve safety, privacy, and with our human in the loop solution, for the most extreme cases, we are ensuring a very high level of certainty that we filter out the fake news. The overall, the model is multimodal, which means it can produce text, image, audio, and video. Uh, it is highly personalized. Uh, we are designed to be multilingual, but we are offering two of the languages in the pilot program, English and Hindi. Uh, overall, News GPT has huge potential, both in B2B and B2C segments. We have started with our B2C. Uh, it's called Newsera app, which is available on Play Store and App Store. And it is powered by News GPT. With the power of AI-driven news generation, we are able to personalize the news experience for each individual. There is no fake news. The form factor of the news is available in multiple form factors of text and video and audio and image. And since social media is the number one source of news consumption nowadays, we have designed it to be natively social. Overall, uh, we have had over 10K monthly active users uh, in the last four months. And the results that we have uh, calibrated is the enhanced news literacy. In terms of our business model, it is uh, for the B2C segment, uh, the Newsera app, we are going to be earning money using native ads and paid subscription. It is having a very healthy unit economics of 3 to 1 LTV to CAC. We are expected to make the ch major chunk of our money from B2B offerings, which is going to be launching uh, in the next few months, which will be around the fact check as a service for fresh content generation based on facts and trends. And since we have had um, we have had a lot of experience building this authentic AI system, we are also going to be releasing some Gen AI builder tools for other enterprises to make um, safe and responsible AI systems at scale. Uh, we are mostly bootstrapped with capital infusions from debts and grants. Um, I'm specifically very proud of the fact that we have been awarded the best startup in the world by AngelList. This is the official quote for them. And uh, they have an open commitment to invest in us uh, under their AngelList early stage quant fund. Apart from this, I'm very uh, proud that we are recognized by Startup India. We are members of elite NASCOM Deep Tech Club. And recently, we were also awarded uh, the Pride of MP Award by the Chief Minister of MP. In terms of our long-term vision and global impact, Newsera aligns with UN's, uh, UN's SDG 4 and 16 by promoting informed decision making, combating misinformation, and thereby increasing news literacy. In the next five years, we want to be the industry leader in AI-driven journalism. And we want to promote building safe, responsible, and authentic AI systems. In terms of our internal strategy, we plan to invest heavily in the innovations in AI, in Gen AI, um, having a lot of partnerships with media, tech, and institution for fair data use, and also going to be launching globally, covering different geographies in different languages. Fake news is the biggest problem of our generation, the way I see it. And we are solving fake news. We are increasing news literacy. It is important for the world that we succeed, because the way we consume news shapes our societies, our policies, and our future. 
Let us see how Newsera is impacting people's lives right now. This is Devra Sirani. Hi, my name is Devika. Hi, I'm Nupur and I'm a student of the Newsera Homes. I have been an early adopter of Newsera. It had concise and interesting things. I liked the interactive feature that was on the app because I've never seen a news app being interactive. We have a clear app which gives you the right amount of information and the right authenticity of the information. It is really a blessing. And as for the app, I have no doubt it will be a great success. So stop by booth G7 at the Expo and talk to us. News GPT, the potential of the technology is immense. And we are going to be like, you know, going to be one of the industry leaders and disrupting how the news is generated at these present times. Thank you very much. Thank you. This was a fantastic presentation. Uh, actually, I have three questions for you, but they're all related. The first one is, how do you think about news polarization? If news? I'm polarization. Uh, so we uh, typically deal with the hard facts of the news. And uh, when we scan the news, we extract all the hard facts. And that is what our news is based on. There is no polarization. There is no bias in the news. The second one is, as you know, a lot of social media companies are getting away from publishing news because of licensing. How do you guys get away with that? So overall, uh, in whatever geographies we are going to be operating, we intend to fully comply with the laws of privacy, uh, with the laws of news, with the laws of aggregators. And uh, the way it will work for us is having a strong partnerships with media and tech and governments. and. Uh, uh, overall, uh, like you know, when we are going to be revenue positive, we are going to be doing the revenue sharing, and that is how we intend to operate. Okay. And the last one is, from the B two C model, you charging f one hundred to four hundred rupees, where someone can get news for free, right? Like, what is the demand? What evidence do you have that people will be willing to pay for that? Uh, so overall, there are two models. One is going to be the native ads, and second is going to be the paid subscription model for the ad-free experience. So in India or in the developing countries, it's going to be more focused towards the native ads. But I feel like you know some upper segments of the society are going to be paying for uh, such subscription charges for ad-free experience, and especially more true for the developed countries. Yes. They scan the fake news. Fake news is in the social media. So, but you said about print media. That is wrong. So overall, uh, the report that we see in the graph statistics, it is from the consumer endpoint of how they are seeing things around the news. It's not tied to one specific kind of media. But this is the report from US. And it is mostly biased towards like more than 60% of people are um, getting news using social media and that is from the consumer side of things if they believe what they are uh, what they are seeing as part of news it is not actually uh, focused on print media or traditional media it is just from the consumer side of experience yeah hello yes. yeah will you please briefly explain that how you are using ai technically to eliminate the fake news and are you also going to deal with the deep fakes yes so uh, we have a very interesting algorithm um, where we track the history of publishers, what they have published over the years. And based on that, there is an AI system which assigns a trust score. And in terms of like you know, um, when we take a link or when we take a piece of news, we try to understand if there are at least five trusted publishers who have published the similar kind of news. And that is how it is claimed as uh, like you know, it's a correct news. And it's a very transparent system. In our app, when you start using it, uh, it's available on App Store, Play Store. You will be able to see that you know what are the sources which are supporting it, and like you know by the 
very foundation of the things. We do score things based on trusted publishers. So we have a very high confidence what they're publishing is true. Deep fakes, yes, the plan is in the future. But uh, right now, the use case of the model is like more from the business side of things to be able to generate news. So um, for deep fakes, I think more of the category will come when we are trying to vet the consumer data when like you know people are generating data and we are trying to vet if it's fake or real. Uh, it is a possibility for us in the future, but right now we are diving into the other use case. Any more questions? So you're primarily aggregating the news, you know, kind of curating it, scanning it, and then putting it. You are not going to the original source of news per se, right? Yes, that is correct. We are going to be like forming data partnerships for the original source of data. So is it right to say that you could also do a B2B model where you give a feedback to the other medias, giving them, I mean, you can just be a SaaS model for that matter. Can you be? Yes, yes. Uh, that is definitely on the cards. And I think that is the major source of revenue in the future for us. Also, not just uh, the fact check as a service, we are going to be like you know working with a lot of news data. So the kind of LLM that will be trained for news generation or news any of the use cases in the future, this model is going to be better than all the LLMs out there. Uh, so which one is a better case for you? Is it the B two C model or it is a B two B model? Definitely B two B model. B two B model. Yeah, I thought so. Thanks. Yes, please. Go ahead. Okay, thank you very much. So I would like to ask, how can you be sure that the the news that you are presented are actually not biased? Because uh, uh, like a quick example, in every government around the world, there are some sources of news that are in favor of them, and there are others that are against. So who Who's the referee, or how can you be sure that you have an unbiased uh, opinion on that? Sure. Uh, so as I mentioned, we only deal with the hard facts. We have the AI, which is built into um, the system, where it takes the news article and it only gets the hard facts. Right? It removes all the opinions. It removes all the bias. Uh, so we, uh, our job is to present the right facts to the people. And obviously, I mentioned that you know in our B2C offering, this is more of a social platform. So people have their free speech. They can form opinions. But uh, getting the right facts to them on time, that is the purpose for us. And we ensure that there is no bias or polarization in that. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so one question. Yes. So Sorry. what type of LLMs are you using? Are you using chat GPT enterprises or uh, open sources LLMs? So we are using open source, and uh, like we have, like you know, trained it on a lot of news data. Um, internally, it is based on one of the open source Llama two. Llama two, fair enough. Thank you. So one one question yes, from mine uh, here. So sorry. Um, sorry. Yes. Um, just one question on sort of you know you mentioned you look at the hard facts from uh, different news sources. Um, given that you're extracting information from different news articles, how would you deal with the issue of copyright? Um, given that this is sort of you know published articles by by other people. Uh, so great question. Uh, the answer is through the right partnerships. Right now, we have partnerships with around 10 publishers, including Newswires and news publishers. And uh, like, in terms of like how or why will they give data to us, it's going to be like you know we are building services in the news industry, so it's going to be more of a symbiotic relationship. And later on, if we are going to be monetizing this data, we are going to be doing revenue sharing with them. Any more questions? Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, just in the interest of time, we will keep the questions limited uh, from the jury members. Um, yes, thank you very much. Uh, moving to the next uh, startup we have today, Cure AI Technologies Private Limited.
Hello everyone, uh, this is Ankit Modi, uh, founder and head of products at Cure.ai. Thank you everyone for taking the time to listen to our story. Firstly, about the company, uh, we were founded in 2016 with a very simple idea uh, of if Facebook can detect our friends uh, in everyday pictures, can't we use the same technology to identify disease and their symptoms uh, from medical images, right? So we work on disease areas like TB, lung cancer, stroke, uh, trauma care, and we work with various uh, health care, healthcare partners uh, spread across public health, private health, population health, pharma and medtech, and various policy shaping organizations. Uh, some of our marquee investors include uh, Novo Holdings, Health Quad, Sequoia India, uh, and Fractal. We work with more than 1.5 uh, billion images in our repository and are deployed uh, in 80, 80 plus countries now. Coming to the problem statement, uh, what we have seen is that the global TB burden, like more than 1 billion uh, people have the TB bacteria, 10 million patients are feeling ill due to TB, and greater than 1 million patients are dying because of it. So if you look at the TB care cascade, most of the dropouts or the problems are in the first two stages where not enough people are being diagnosed with TB. If they are diagnosed in the last three stages, there are a lot of dropouts in treatment monitoring, follow-up management, uh, etc. India has set up a more aggressive goal than the world, uh, which is 2030, but India's goal is to eradicate TB by 2025. And we'll talk about how Cure.ai is solving some of these issues in the care cascade. Coming to the product, uh, we uh, call the, our chest X-ray AI algorithm QXR, uh, which is an autonomous read of a chest X-ray. As you can see, it can highlight areas of the chest X-rays which are abnormal, create a natural language report, and alert doctors about patients who are susceptible to TB, lung cancer, heart failure, etc. This takes care of the problems of the first part of the care cascade, where not enough patients are being diagnosed because uh, just sharing some numbers, in US there is one radiologist for every 10,000 people while the same number in India uh, is 100,000. We also work with countries like Lesotho where there is just one radiologist for the entire country. So there's, there's severe lack of uh, expertise in reading radiology exams, specifically chest x-rays in our scenario. The second part of the solution is the mobile and web-based app which takes care of everything else except AI, uh, which basically means that uh, it digitalizes the program uh, of TB screening. Uh, people can register patients, they can collaborate with each other, they can fill out forms, uh, and then the program managers can also monitor the efficiency of the programs. Uh, and that's done through the dashboards and real-time notifications that we provide. The solution was evaluated independently by WHO, uh, and it was the only Indian AI company uh, to be recommended by WHO to be used in TB screening in absence of human readers, which means that you can directly rely on the AI algorithm uh, for TB screening uh, in such scenarios. This was acquired three years ago. We have also been uh, evaluated by Stop TV, a policy shaping organization, on a massive scale, which was on more than 23,000 patients. Companies across the world participated in it, and Cure.ai came, to came on top of it uh, based on the accuracies and other metrics determined by the organization. Uh, the research paper related to it was published on The Lancet, which is the best uh, medical journal uh, in the world. We are also innovati innovating in terms of the screening models. Uh, so some of the things that we have done is that uh, while patients are being uh, screened for TB, 
the chest X-ray is being taken, right? Uh, so the same chest X-ray can also be evaluated for uh, signs of lung cancer, heart failure. So this is what we call integrated TB screening programs. We are also working towards occupational health screening where TB screenings are being combined with signs of pneumoconiosis and silicosis. We are also working on settings of prison-based screening, which is a huge problem because TB patients there are confined in a small space and the susceptibility uh, for contamination to other patients is really high. Our AI is truly made in India for the world. While we started with India and we are in 25 states, 370 sites, processing 2.1 million scans, we have also expanded in last three years to 80 countries, 1,800 sites, and 10 million plus scans have been processed through our software. Looking at the impact, uh, what we have seen is that as compared to before AI and post AI, 25% more TB patients are being detected, which were being missed because they were not showing early signs of TB. So basically what happens is that if a patient comes in the hospital with signs of TB, he or she is getting recognized pretty well. But there are patients who are coming for different reasons, right? Be, be it cough, be it pneumonia, and they are taking a chest X-ray anyways. So the AI is deployed in a surveillance-based model where if there is sign of TB, they are immediately uh, pushed to the TB care pathway. And with that, we have seen 25% additional TB cases being detected. We have been able to reduce the cost of TB detection by 50% because earlier the costly uh, post-screening microbiological tests uh, were given to a huge portion of patients. But now that has been reduced because it's being given to only patients that are flagged at high risk uh, by the algorithm. The reduction time uh, has been reduced by 99% uh, because, uh, and, and due to which what's happening is that the instead of in three weeks, the patient is being detected in two hours and that's saving his health as well as preventing him from spreading TB into his or her communities. Our business model is, uh, I mean, we do direct sales with public health implementation partners, indirectly with distributors, and donor-funded uh, projects like USAID, United, and Global Fund. Uh, the team building it, uh, so we are a four-member founder team. Prashant Warrior, CEO, is a serial entrepreneur, having sold and built AI companies before. Uh, I have 10 years of experience in building AI products uh, uh, in my lifetime. Preetam, Chief AI Officer, and Rohit, Chief Commercial Officer, are from IIT Bombay. But apart from that, uh, we have a strong 70-member uh, team. Uh, we have 50-plus clinicians working with us. So it's a very good collaboration of uh, technologists and clinicians working together. Uh, finally, uh, our goal is to conclude uh, and touch 1 billion lives. What we have seen in the last six years is that while the intelligence might be artificial, if the intent and the emotions driving it are real and human, there is no limit to the impact that can be created. Thank you. Great job, Ankit. Thank you. I mean, anyway, a well-known startup. So tell me, uh, you are still going up to X-ray where there are technologies which can detect this way early than that. So have you kind of, are you thinking of going upstream on that? Oh, for sure. Uh, we are uh, working on, I mean, we had already worked on chest X-rays. The follow-up tests after chest X-rays, something like a chest CT for, say, for example. No, I'm saying even before that, early detection, there are cuff uh, yeah. acoustics which can detect today. Right. There are uh, breath analyzer which can detect that. Yeah. Are you working upstream or not? So what we have done is that we have enabled uh, on our platform to upload cuff sounds for patients, and we are integrating with other AI companies who are able to analyze that and then give the same alert to the patient. So instead of uh, building everything ourselves, we are focusing on imaging AI and bringing together other AI partners on our platform uh, to solve the other things. Uh, I just asked because you have a large data set. Oh, yeah, for sure, yeah. But that's mostly imaging and radiology reports. So that brings me to imaging and radiology. Yeah. Are you... Uh, thinking about moving into different uh, radiology and imaging, uh, you yeah. know, AI-based this thing, anything that you can 
Yeah. Tell us about it. We are definitely uh, working on uh, foundational models and generative AI and looking at longitudinal data sets uh, right from uh, EMR to imaging uh, to clinical discharge reports. Uh, but still very early stage, we are just uh, trying to see what is possible and what can be achieved there. Uh, but definitely a lot of R&D efforts are going there. And uh, sorry, I'm asking too many questions, but I'm very no, intrigued. Please do, yeah. Uh, what's the cost for the patient mm -hmm. of doing this or so to the doctor for that matter? Yeah. Uh, so we work on an yearly license model and uh, we have mostly B2B. Uh, the costs are basically a cut from the uh, radiology report. So just to give you a sense, a radiologist get 50 rupees in India to read a chest x-ray while it can be uh, anywhere between 15 to 20 dollars, which is like 1000 plus rupees in US. So in, based on different markets, the pricings are different. Uh, overall, we operate at a uh, gross margin of around 70%. So, and what is the uptake? I mean, are these being used? I saw you're a large footprint, but is the, what is the revenue that you are getting right now on an annualized basis? Any idea? So we know what is the uptake then. Right. Uh, so we are, uh, I mean, we have seen 2,000% improvement in the revenue in the last two years. And uh, current year, we should be closing uh, in and around $20 million. In your revenue? In your revenue, yeah. Wow, congrats. Are you still a startup? <laughs> <laughs> if Flipkart is a startup, then yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, one question for me, I remember about 10 years ago, I worked for GE Healthcare, and we did similar things. <laughs> so what did you do, like how is your algorithm improved like what did you change to the state of the art that made you guys so much more accurate uh, yeah so i mean uh, companies like g and simmons have tried it out in fact they are one of their partners uh, but they have also realized that i mean to build such as called algorithms you need pristine focus right uh, and so they have switched towards building platforms where they can onboard an ai algorithms like ours and that's also the reason why we are not going into cuff sound detection through ai right like i mean it requires focus and dedicated efforts to one thing to, to do one thing really really well uh, yeah so i hope that answers your question y yes and no like um, some of the image c computer vision algorithm unknown right like we know what are the best ones mm -hmm. Are you guys using some of those and using your large data sets to improve those models? Or are you guys creating net new models? So we do improve our models, but the regulatory uh, side of healthcare uh, prevents us from doing continuous learning. So we cannot update our models on a daily basis. So once the models are approved, uh, they have to be deployed as it is. But over the years, we do procure more data, update the algorithms internally, and then we have to go to the regulatory bodies like CE and FD and say that this is the new model now. Uh, and we show that the performance on the previous data set is actually the same or better. Uh, and then they are allowed to, I mean, we are allowed to like sort of update the models in production. Uh, I have a question over here. Uh, this side, your right side. Uh, uh, you have talked about TB through a chest X-rays, but there is a growing trend on extra pulmonary. And uh, how do you validate the this extra pulmonary with your findings on the pulmonary? Because it is a growing trend, and WHO has also reported. So, how do you account for false negatives? Right, so certainly, like, I mean, uh, there is extra pulmonary. There is also, I mean, signs of TB in HIV patients are different from non-HIV patients. So there are certainly some gaps that we are trying to address with bringing more AI partners. And like I talked about, uh, building algorithms that can look at longitudinal data, like the demography of the patient, the geography that they come in, come in from, and what are the other signs that the MR data can provide you. Uh, but I would say, like, I mean, yeah, it will still need more focus and more efforts to build that out. Thank you. I think there are no further questions. Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, we're only taking, we have limited time. We're taking questions mostly from the jury members. Thank you. Um, next startup, we have Sarv Deep Call Private Limited, uh, Nam AI.
गुड आफ्टरनून नमस्कार वॉट इज नाम नाम इज इंडिया फर्स्ट ए आई कॉलर आइडेंटिफिकेशन ऐप विच आइडेंटिफाइज एनी अननोन कॉल स्पैमर्स एंड स्कैनर्स विदाउट सिंकिंग योर कॉन्टैक्ट सो वॉट यू सिंग ऑन द राइट हैंड साइड ऑफ द स्क्रीन बेसिकली इज द नाम कॉलर आई डी स्क्रीन वेन एवर एनी अननोन कॉल कम्स दिस इज हाउ द कॉलर आई डी यू नो डेटा विल कम लाइक दज नॉट जस्ट द नेम एंड नंबर बट ऑल्सो हिज ऑर्गेनाइजेशन एंड सिटी वेयर ही लिव्स एंड हैंस कम्स अ टैग लाइक नाम ही पहचान है so what we are trying to build here is you know as a uh, child we grow up and we go to school we go to college and we work somewhere we work in a profession but what is our real identity when we step out of the office and with nam we want to try to create an identity for the individual and you know, how do people know you outside your professional world so with digital with, with the digitalization we have a lot of new you know problems coming into the picture first one is the data breach and privacy concerns like i know like there already a you know um, foreign players coming into the market but in order to use those application you have to compromise on the data privacy they are syncing your contact and it's not just the contact they are even syncing your sms which means they know what car you own like what insurance you have which credit card you have which uh, what you what you know which which bank statement your salary gets credited in and with this privacy is how the you know at at advertising market is going on and second is the problem of spammers and scammers so these companies are actually not helping the you know the spams and scam these are actually promoting them because as soon as these are working on the crowdsource data so the number of people who actually mark the spams and scam that's how they can reach the data and no vernacular language support which means in we are a country of diverse language and religion and cultures so there is no specific language like if i have to choose a marathi or tamil or telugu or hindi how can i change my complete phone in that particular language and lastly with the digitalization we have the deep fake identity frauds happening so everybody data is lying on the internet how can one prevent you know that somebody doesn't create a deep fake out of it so what are the solutions nam the new ai data company of india first of all we are a privacy first approach which means your data is secure and safe with the nam so in order to use the application just download from the play store you don't need to sync your sms we have not even built an sms integration in the app you know you don't need to sync your contacts which means without syncing your contacts and compromising your data we'll able to tell you who is the person who is calling to you who are the spammers and scammers and how are you going to stop the deep fake fraud prevention so our ideal target customers will be a non celebrity person because celebrity data is already available on the internet but since we are based on a you know crowdsourced data and public data we are doing a public data open data from the internet so we'll help people boss your data is lying on the internet at these internet websites do you want us help to remove the data so our we want to help the ordinary people to stop and remove the deep fake and pulse so the idea here is that you know uh, our children most of the children who is the smartphone in the 6th grade to 12th grade uh, grade category they are going coaching institution they are you know studying uh, studying in india and all that but parents are concerned hopefully my child is secure and all that so we want you know even uh, inform the parents that you know any scammer any cyber bullying bullying or any harassment is not going with the children so that is the idea in the future how can we prevent even the uh, children of the india and the vernacular language support so what you seeing on the screen is a call log feature of the app so if of any individual changes the you know uh, theme in the hindi so that's how the uh, phone screen will look in the hindi is not just the uh, settings the contacts but even the names will come in the hindi so this is all based on the nlp model because if you change the name just by doing a google translate sona becomes a gold but that doesn't work ideal way so we have built an nlp algorithm on that so every name we can actually able to you know translate in a particular defined language so we are a very strong competitive team we are bachelors and masters in computer science we have done mbas and our mission is to create communication data secure between people so there are a lot of business model in this domain uh, you know initially targeting the api business model we want to integrate uh, api in the various uh, uh, you know b2b companies in india second is uh, the attack market so calling app is the only industry where the margins are actually going on even without opening the app so i just give an instance like on an average as per the study every individual spends close to 4 4 four to 4 four and a half hours per day on social media browsing instagram youtube or facebook but in this uh, domain everything is actually happening outside the app you get a call and what is happening at the end of the call 
you are getting a advertisement which can be in a form of an image a gif or an animation people not aware of it once even you have to close the app uh, close the ad in order to come on the home screen so everything is happening without even opening the app and this market is very huge and in the coming years there is a lot of penetration going to happen in the rcs market rich communication services and verified business caller and we, we will launch it as a premium subscription of uh, 99 per annum so just to give an understanding of uh, unit economics that how we plan to become a 25 crore, uh, crore company in the next five years so imagine if nam has close to 100 million users on an average every individual gets at least 10 calls per day which means i'm talking about a 1 billion impression per day how many apps in india have the capability to serve this because it's all happening with the hook is or it's not inside the app the hook is outside the app and uh, the subscription would be at the 99 rupees and we want to go into the rcs market which is actually what whatsapp is doing you know creating we want to become an enabler between brands and customer brand will come on the platform and we want to uh, you know reach out to the customer so we will be a kind of a channel and enabler between them so to build this company uh, we have done a heavy investment of close to 2 million dollar which is mostly in, you know kind of done investment to build the company to build the ai and the tech because the tech part is the most uh, technical uh, uh, part of it and that is the moat also uh, that we can you know proudly say that no one even can replicate that because if somebody have done that it's already been done because if you see the startup industry we have you know e-commerce so many competition we have uh, the uh, taxi market the ola and ubers we have the uh, pharmacy market cluttered we have the upi cluttered by why not in this space because the tech is very hard to build on that so what would be your long term vision is how we can with this we want to create a safe user india uh, by reducing noise and potential scams we want to remove the data from the internet enabling safe and safer india and with this strategy we want to go and make in india for the global and and to enable that we have to do a partnership with various telecoms OEMs, and manufacturers and lastly how do we going to contribute the United, this this way we also want to contribute to the united nations sustainable development goal in creating a digital resilient society because if we are helping people the women in order to avoid spams and scams calls we are eventually you know saving their time saving the, their uh, quality work and doing some something additional for the business and in terms of the innovation uh, we are actually innovative company a couple of the products i talked about like the pulse we have indicated the whatsapp feature where you can just disconnect the call just by clicking on on the whatsapp and we have to an amazing start we have launched the app in uh, june in uh, nine in indian regional languages we have identified close to 350 million uh, safe to talk user with a point and 0.5 million people are actually using the app right now and we have the how we want to grow is our exciting roadmap currently next by next year we want to grow to 10 million users and uh, 2025 we want plan to grow to 100 million user scale so thank you and we believe that nam is not just a nam it's a catalyst for positive india change thank you questions uh, if any yeah hi so the what is your usp as compared to the true caller so basically true caller uh, the first of all the true caller syncs your data and you no need to sync your data and basically we are based on the public available data base we control all the internet whether and we build ai ml models to identify this is the name and this is the number and because the things your contact list there is lots of uh, reciprocal effects as well so for example if uh, someone buy a sim and save their name by my wife so that start, start reflecting as a my wife to everywhere and second thing is even the two color actually the best uh, tool for scammers so what they are doing they download the two color change their identity in the two color and start making a call uh, you know, misperceptioning the other people as well. So, uh, and they also note in uh, multiple languages as well. And uh, even uh, government of India, army, and lots of uh, government places, they are saying that two colors no, should not get installed on their applications. We are uh, enabling these uh, segments as well. And also, we will tell you that where is your data is publicly available. So, the primary source of spam or scam is because your data is somewhere listed by accidental or intentional someone else list your data over the internet. So we provide you that links, websites as well in premium subscription that you should delist them and uh, kill the root cause of spam, scams, and even the deep fake in future if your image is, is listed there. 
So there's many more things, and we are just five MB application, no uh, heavy SDKs, very low footprint and power as well, and uh, no advertisements inbuilt right now. So there's many more features uh, that differentiate us. Yeah, it's great. Thank you. What's your cost of customer acquisition? I mean, is this five lakh has just happened organically? Yeah, yeah. organically, sir. So uh, no, we just launched. We also selected in tech thirty companies of India, and uh, you know, people uh, know know us, then they tell other people say as well. And no one in India have the first language as uh, English. So you know, the lots of uh, tier two, tier cities people are also getting attraction on this application. Actually. And when do you convert it into pay? A bit of premium, eh? Yes, right. premium or uh, uh, opt-in based advertisements in future. So when will you convert into a paid model? After 10 million uh, users. So when we have okay. the idea is to create a product stable and get a sustainable user growth and post that will uh, go on the monetization. And even uh, we also like uh, integrating these solutions with uh, UP112 emergency services. Like before even the call comes, we can identify the caller is uh, no, the uh, female and uh, you know, a teenager yeah, and the call true. get routed accordingly. So we recently deployed uh, to the biggest contact center of India, uh, worldwide specifically, of 112 uh, and uh, dial 100 UP. In. So this also a very useful impacts on this kind of solutions. Then we can get, um, get money from other than like, uh, no, uh, Is there a OEM model to this where you can go to the telcos and ask them to actually yes, sir. put uh, it on all their subscribers? Yes. So isn't Masilani. that a better business model? And also we're speaking with the Jio and Airtel that um, our machine learning models able to identify the people who are uh, doing scams or spams by their calling pattern and behavior. So we can push them directly that you should suspend that these uh, SIMs. And uh, you know, uh, also government of India is pushing because they come DLT in SMS, but they have no way to support you know, how to stop uh, calls. But in that switch, in this technology able to stop the calls as well. Thank you. Thank you very much. What valuation you are looking for? Uh, the I think we can discuss open for negotiation. We can discuss that. <laughs> okay. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you. Mm, our next startup for uh, the pitching session is uh, Teresa Technologies Private Limited. Good afternoon, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, thanks to MIT for giving us this opportunity uh, to present this, and thanks to GPA and OECD for this amazing expo uh, that has been created. And uh, we have taken one of the uh, objectives uh, as a responsible AI, and uh, uh, this is what we are going to present to you. Uh, so I am Dipendu Biswas from Teresa Technologies. Uh, uh, we are a fintech startup, and uh, the problem is solving is. Uh, for uh, banks to determine the creditworthiness of small and medium businesses uh, because uh, they have uh, challenges accessing finance, uh, not only in India, but in many parts of the world. Uh, hence, uh, uh, we are trying to solve that problem where uh, the information uh, is obtained digitally. And, uh, uh, and apart from the credit bureaus, which already hold a lot of information, credit information about small and medium businesses, we are using alternate data sources also uh, to uh, gather information to determine the credit worthiness of small and medium businesses. And sometimes uh, uh, when the existing systems uh, don't work, uh, people have to resort to paperwork, uh, which adds to uh, the lot of uh, time and labor, and uh, time costs money, and uh, it adds to the bank's transaction costs. And uh, as I said, many of the small and medium businesses uh, do not have uh, great history, uh, so uh, it also adds to the problem. 
we have done extensive uh, uh, market survey uh, with various customer segments. Uh, some are uh, microfinance institutions, NBFCs, uh, uh, public sector banks, and private sector banks. And we have uh, collected a lot of uh, insights uh, from the various uh, pain points they have. Uh, some of the uh, large uh, uh, public sector banks uh, want to lend to uh, priority sector lending. However, uh, because of uh, the high cost of transaction, uh, they uh, purchase uh, uh, priority sector lending certificates uh, from various government agencies. And uh, it's left to the government agencies to do the financial inclusion work. Uh, however, uh, if the uh, cost of transaction is re reduced, then they can do the transactions themselves. Uh, and. Uh, so uh, here is an app uh, which uh, we demonstrated to our central bank innovation hub, Reserve Bank Innovation Hub uh, at IIT Madras, uh, where uh, we uh, use uh, local language, which is activated by GPS uh, in the location of the user so that they can interact uh, uh, in their local language uh, which have, with the financial system and do transactions, uh, whether it's uh, uh, payment transactions or whether it's a uh, lending uh, requirement that they have. And uh, then uh, we also uh, do KYC using video uh, and analysis using AI uh, to detect the voice and audio and then uh, authorize the person uh, with minimal interaction. And it is also disability, disability friendly because uh, uh, they just have to uh, interact with our app and, uh, uh, and, and get the services from the financial se sector uh, which they are looking for. And um, uh, our uh, core focus is our digital lending, uh, apart from the uh, innovation in financial services in uh, enabling uh, digital financial services. We have a three-stage process to discover the borrowers, uh, profile them, and then uh, do the approval of loans followed by uh, uh, the disbursals as well as uh, automated collections through the uh, NAC and other automated systems. Uh, so you also see an app uh, which uses uh, uh, AI uh, to determine uh, the various financial transactions uh, the small and medium businesses are doing. Uh, currently, we are using our central bank's account aggregator framework uh, to take the mobile number of the borrower and detect which bank accounts it is associated with and with permission, with their consent workflow, get the financial history for a period of one or two year and run our uh, uh, machine learning algorithms to determine uh, the, their creditworthiness and also the risk of uh, lending by the bank uh, to the borrower. Uh, and uh, we use generative uh, uh, AI uh, to help the financial uh, advisors and underwriters to interact with the system uh, using prompts uh, to understand the various financial ratios and uh, uh, get an idea of uh, what is the risk the bank is taking in lending to them instead of going through volumes of information uh, which uh, is very time consuming. So it helps uh, uh, them to reduce the time and uh, process a lot more uh, transactions uh, in a minimum amount of time and uh, add to the uh, revenue growth of the bank. Uh, we were recognized by Bank of Baroda as one of the top 10 uh, financial, uh, top 10 fintech startups uh, for innovation in financial services using RBI's account aggregator framework. And as I just discussed, uh, we were also selected by Reserve Bank uh, Innovation Hub for uh, voice assisted financial services. Uh, the business model is to pilot uh, with the banks uh, and financial institutions uh, for a period of 30 months uh, so they get a feel of uh, uh, what uh, uh, our offering is and the various uh, divisions uh, within the financial institutions from risk management uh, to uh, uh, the other uh, 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 other sectors like um, uh, customer onboarding, they get a feel of uh, what our offering is all about and how it compares to their existing systems. And we uh, um, get them on a path to transition or run uh, two systems parallelly. And uh, then we start the subscription from $250 monthly to $1,800. Uh, this is on the conservative side and uh, uh, primarily on non-banking financial corporations. But because of our exposure through Reserve Bank of India, we were introduced to Bank of Baroda and uh, Canada Bank. Uh, these are the large uh, financial banks uh, in India, uh, upwards of 100,000 crores of revenue. And uh, uh, they, they have given us the opportunity uh, to showcase uh, what we are doing uh, uh, in terms of uh, uh, reducing the cost of transactions, and hence uh, we can charge an AMC of a million dollars uh, uh, to these large banks uh, which are operating in India. Uh, 
Uh, here's a unit economics. Again, this is on the conservative side. Uh, $74 is the uh, per month uh, unit economics. Uh, however, for large banks, uh, our unit, unit, unit economics are much more healthier. Uh, uh, currently, uh, we are bootstrapped, uh, and uh, our opportunity cost is around uh, $70,000. Uh, and uh, uh, we are uh, trying to raise a million dollars with a valuation of uh, $10 million. Uh, here's the management team. I am Dipendu, uh, uh, founder uh, uh, with around 23 years of experience in uh, banking uh, sector across the world. And uh, Karatwa is uh, a woman founder who assists with uh, talent recognition and onboarding. Uh, these are the recognitions that I was talking about. And uh, that's the end of our presentation. Open for questions, gentlemen, ladies. Hey, so when you started, you started almost like a financial inclusion, you know, theme, and then it has gone to a very different direction. Uh, can you just connect the dots and tell us how does it really help people who are underserved? Yeah, so uh, because uh, digital lending was always the core, and it still remains the core in financial inclusion. Uh, Digital lending uh, is the core, and uh, uh, that is still the, uh, our uh, our customer segment. One of our customer segments in I showed was microfinance institutions and NBFCs. So that's still there, and we are still providing our service to them. Uh, but as we, uh, you know, I mean, because this is the, this was the beachhead market we had. We could talk to the you know uh, chief stakeholders there. Uh, however, the big banks, uh, I mean, we didn't have access to, but through. Uh, RBI's intervention, we got recognition and we got access to the big banks. And there we see uh, there's a priority sector lending uh, criteria that they have to meet. However, uh, they uh, try to mitigate that uh, by buying uh, priority lender certificates and give it to uh, and off NABARD. And NABARD has the responsibility of financial inclusion. What we are saying is, okay, I mean, we can help you reduce the cost of transaction so that you don't have to you know, buy priority sector lending certificates and you become part of the financial inclusion yourself. So uh, that's how uh, our transition from, I mean, it's not a transition. I mean, like, we got the exposure to, uh, you know, expand our uh, customer segments. Right. And you moved way, way away from where you said you wanted to target. People who do not have a credit worthiness, people who do not have resources, from there to the priority lending, that's a very, uh, two different aspects of lending. But anyway, I guess you'll get there sometime. Yeah, that's, I mean, because that's the profits uh, uh, that will come from, and that's where the margins will come from. And uh, financial inclusion will be in the uh, you know, uh, microfinance sector. So that will we'll continue to serve that. How big is the team for you right now? Uh, it's uh, six people. Thanks. Thank you, Pankaj. So, Dipendu, why have you used this domain .tk? Uh, well, it's a free domain. I mean, we are frugal, we are bootstrapped, so every penny is important to us, and uh, uh, yeah. I guess it's time to change now. Uh, we are still bootstrapped. I mean, yeah, if we get funding, we definitely, I mean, it's just like $500, right? I mean, it's not a big deal. Yeah. Right. Uh, can you talk about uh, current revenue numbers? I, I might have missed that on your slide. Uh, current revenue numbers. How much you've been doing over the last year? Yeah, right now we are at pre-revenue because uh, okay, we are a deep rex startup and okay. there's a lot of work that goes into the algorithms and the models. Uh, it's very expensive. So we are keeping our transactions also low. We are hosted on AWS. We are running on cre credits that were given by AWS sure. to us. Uh, but the moment uh, we have sufficient reserves, we will automatically scale up the AWS transactions to for high volumes. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Um, so we have our uh, final pitch for today um, from Sitori Infotech Private Limited, Kisan AI. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, I'm Pratik Desai, I'm founder of Kisan AI, uh, and I think whatever you're going to hear from me today is not India first, like we have been working world's first in the journey that we have. Uh, so like we have 2 billion people associated with agriculture around the world, and doesn't matter which continent they are, like we always know they are suffering in some way. 
And doesn't matter what kind of advisory they are, like, you know, seeking for seeds, pesticide, fertilizer, equipment, doesn't matter. And <clears throat> mostly this is the last mile smallholder farmers that struggle with, you know, proper advisory because, you know, uh, this ecosystem is fragmented. Uh, there's like, you know, you are, you're a farmer. You're not supposed to remember all the settings in your app. That you, you're supposed to work in the farm. And this apps and the settings and these things are like, are like really like difficult for farmer to remember. And that's why we see like drop off using them, the technology. Because, you know, the technology is not simple enough. But then the same farmer will use WhatsApp and Instagram, every one of them, and you don't have to try to teach them to like, hey, how to use WhatsApp. They figured that out because this was simple to use. While if you talk about anyone, say like, hey, we have to reach out 25,000 farmer, they'll be like, oh, this many extension worker, education costs and everything. Like it's expensive to reach out to the farmer, bring a new technology, and then within a, like a one quarter, they'll forget. Uh, so, and now focus on the Indian pro uh, like problem. So we have a lot of education institute pro uh, producing research, a lot of organization working inside. Uh, and there's a lot of knowledge get produced, but it never reaches the farmer. It reaches the farmer, but like on huge expense. So uh, what we build, uh, we build a farmer's co-pilot. It's a vernacular, multilingual, voice-based, a uh, generative AI, and it's a conversational. So what you need to do is take an app, select your language, and just there is a one button always, ask AI, and you start having conversation with the AI. It will deliver you from the knowledge base that we have curated from all this uh, research institute or agriculture institute or something which is like supposed to reach out to the farmer uh, from practices and everything else. And I think this is something also uh, in inauguration, uh, uh, Prime Minister Modi talked about like how the, the conversational chatbots are actually affecting farmers. And this is like, this is, we were, when we launched, we were the first one in the world. Uh, we solve end to end voice problem. Uh, we are supporting nine Indian languages. Uh, we have like m other languages also supported, but we are focusing on India. And we were like first to do that before like you know, OpenAI or BART did that end-to-end -end voice thing. Like we did it in March. And because we solved a problem and how we did it, uh, there's uh, like you need to understand that this uh, knowledge that get produced are in PDF. There's like scan pictures or like some perchy and all things like that. And that's not like something which you know farmer can access easily or that's not something he want to re uh, like research. So we are working with uh, people in the background in farming, our participation and collaboration with Agriculture Institute, we are curating the information so it can be then fed to the LLMs. And then when the farmer asks a question, the LLM comprehend the question and then deliver, fetch the knowledge, convert into the way that farmer can understand in a simplified manner and deliver them in their own language. And if it's a voice conversation, then it will re reply back in the same language. And uh, because it's generative AI and you are curating data, we have figured out how to kind of properly curate data because we've been like doing very early, we figured out dynamic chunking and all the other uh, parameter that like, you know, people are figuring out right now. This work for all other verticals. It doesn't have to be just seed or fertilizer or anything. And then uh, when we launch, it, we, are, we have done like zero dollars in marketing yet. And more than 100,000 farmers we have reached already. More than 300,000 question invoice and uh, like, you know, text base has been asked. And we are seeing like r tremendous returning rate, like whoever use it, they are coming back. Whoever use it and like it, they understand it's simple. They are forwarding in their WhatsApp group. They are forwarding in other WhatsApp group. Then we started seeing farmers finding our phone number. We, we were like just a one page and that's like link, link, link. They found out our phone number, calling us, say, hey, I have a problem with my tractor and my low skill workers keep breaking the equipment. Can you bring the manual top of it? And it's like, this bank not doing me the rate for other banks. I want a tractor loan. Like, can you actually provide me the information so I can get all the loans numbers from all other banks? And policies information and we started like we are still getting bombarded people are coming 800 kilometers today and like last two days to meet us at our booth because they found out that I'm traveling here uh, from San Francisco uh, now how are we gonna make a business like we are for profit we are a startup and we're gonna keep it like that so we can scale uh, the whole global industry is nine trillion dollar and we know like acquisition cost is really high and even if it's a one percent of that customer acquisition cost of five percent total is still a $5.4 billion industry, like all around the world. And being like the pioneering uh, in the whole, this generative agriculture, uh, we are trying to kind of solve this four big problem for every B2, uh, like business in agri input or like any, anything related in agriculture, uh, which is low farmer engagement. They have an app, everyone has an app, but 
the farmer use it once or twice in one season, then they never open the app. So, you know, like they are not using the app much and then they forgot how to use it because there are so many options, click, click, click here. Then there's a huge amount of staff for support every language 24 seven. And this L1, L2 support people are like, not really that, that they can answer all the question, like they're basic or they have to like read catalogs and figure things out. But AI, they can ask and say like, hey, I have a cotton crop, I have a white fry problem, which of your uh, pesticide I'll use, and AI will just fetch it and say like, this is what you need to do, and that to remove all this, like, you know, 24 seven. And we have seen our platform, farmers calling middle of the night, we are the farming, you can see the cricket in the background, we can hear the cricket in the background, because we do anonymously like the voice listing, and the farmer from the field, while watering the farm, asking questions, like, we enable 24 seven, like, you know, like, access to the farmer, now they don't have to wait on the line, or talk to a professor, or get appointment to university, which probably never happens, you know, that's, like, you know, we know how it works. And then we are actually enabling if the uh, farmers are engaging inside their app, then we can also enable B2B's direct con uh, customer acquisition and the cost. So it reduces significantly the distribution channel and all the layers there in between, which cost the agri input companies and also the farmer. So if you reduce all those layers and enable the direct uh, you know, like, uh, co co commerce, then it helps the B2B company. And we, can, we are collecting insights so we can also help them with the product design and say like, hey, your particular, this per, uh, pesticide, like just an example, we, uh, we do all vertical. This pesticide has a lot of grievances, sentiments very low, you should work on the product design. So this is the inputs and insight we can provide for agri companies. And uh, so our generative AI platform, what we do with, work with them, that we do curation for them, we create LLM, we create custom API, so they can integrate it inside all of their, uh, different uh, with the farmers, customer support, or distribution channels. And in terms of providing value, uh, we are like end-to-end uh, -end generative partners for the agriculture companies. We help them with data, data enrichment from their construction knowledge. We help them create billet, uh, models, co-pilots, insights. And our biggest thing is we have B2B, but B2C with the Kisan AI is our the data acquisition platform. We run B2F, so we can create the premium model. So we keep running for free. Farmers always have free access to Kisani and general knowledge, which help us to build our platform, uh, platform which then we use as the, our model. And there, and there is huge uh, inbounds we have seen. In terms of customer, we have one Fortune 500 company who are working with us to have this thing, this whole technology integrated for their knowledge base. We have one uh, world organization working with us to create a board. And, uh, I think, uh, give me one second, because I think I want to be the source stopper, because we always have complained that India doesn't ship LLMs. So we actually, Monday on the day, first day, we shipped our first LLM. It's called Denu, based on Lama and Hathi from Servom. We collaborated with Servom. And the Denu is the world's first uh, agriculture model shipped from India. And this we launched on the 12th, and I think we have been receiving great uh, thing, and uh, uh, in like, you know, inbounds right now, already I'm bombarded with them because this is an agriculture specific 300,000 instruction, real conversation from farmer curated and rich. And it's also bilingual. So it's a Hindi and English and English native. So uh, you do not use a lot of extra token for Hindi. You ask in Hindi, you receive in Hindi, token numbers are reduced. And we're gonna keep making it premium model. We, we're gonna fit more conversation. So we have like very focused India agriculture practices specific model that we can then use either in our pipeline, replace open AI, which are like supporting us, Microsoft supporting us, Intel supporting us, but like we replace them, we put our thing, we can also that use as like a revenue model for someone else who wanna develop uh, agri thing. And then we also help agri companies say you, we train your model, you keep your weight, so you don't have to be like, you know, worry about your knowledge base. So we can also help as a model training curation for the agri company, they wait, they, you know, build on top of ours. And that's probably gonna be business model. So I'm gonna be so stopper and stop over here for the questions. Maybe I can get it started. Uh, I think great job. You did a fantastic job. Um, I, I read a report recently which said that there's about 60 advisory solutions in India alone. Yeah. How is your solution in terms of quality advisory different than some of the other ones like Digital Greens? Yeah, I, I, I know Digital Green very well. And Digital Green is working on their own database. They are not curating everything. And it's uh, also non-profit foundation. So we are building a startup. So we want to scale and we have like a 12 countries reaching out to us. So we want to make sure that like, you know, we build, curate whole pipeline as like a, like, you know, on the startup level 
and then like keep repeating everywhere else. So like our mandate is to curate wherever we get money and like revenue. In terms of advisories, in terms advisory. of the quality of the advisory. Quality, okay. So as I was saying, the Digital Greens uses their own uh, data that has been collected by them or the videos. They transcribe the video. I work with all of them, actually, the people who develop. And uh, we want to take the all the data that is also produced by the Agriculture Institute. We have 120 ICARs and Agriculture University who produces their package of practices, which is a very geography specific. So our advisor is basically right now we have done like 30 to 35 percent curation of the knowledge that produced in like India, because it's very difficult to access to. It's like a, taken a picture and scanned thing. We have to like do a lot of uh, like you know curation on top of it, convert them into like language to forms and then English and then do curation like properly for chunks. So we want to make sure that like we cover everything which is related to uh, like for India like agriculture institute knowledge, research later on and like very specific for that thing and not just limited to like one particular mandate, you know. So we have like a bigger knowledge base basically compared to like digital greens. So as I understand now you have two options to go down, right? One is either to build out the application for the farmer or build out this LLM that you can then possibly provide to other companies that are building applications or you can do both. It's same thing. No, it is the same thing, but because as a matter the, of focus. Because the conversation helped me to get my model better. Right now, the 300,000 instruction is coming from this model. N next time I have a million, my model will be better. So 2.0 will have a million instruction kind of fit in, right? So in a way, you're choosing to do both things, is my understanding. You will build out the LLM that can service other startups yeah. or like other companies doing this kind of advisory work or any other kind of work with farmers, which requires agricultural research information to be aggregated, right. etc. Plus, you'll build out the advisory application for the farmer. So advisory application, get me the instruction that helped me to build the model. Yeah, no, I, I understand. So we'll, that we'll do continuous thing because then I, 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 I lose my edge to be the like first one to have most premium model in agriculture domain space, right? And can you talk about how you're planning to acquire the farmers? You obviously mentioned the cost is very higher, high, right? Yeah. But so what's your go-to market plan for acquiring that set of farmer customers? Okay. So as, I, to start using as I said, like we have 100,000 farmers right now without zero marketing. They are just spreading right now. And I'm like right now not forcing myself to get more farmers right now. Like, So if we are working with some FAOs and MGOs so they can actually like help them out. But I want to figure out a good revenue model and like a profitable business before I open it up and say like, hey, 100 million farmers are using it and I run out of all my GPO credits or the money that I have raised in revenue. So while we get like important conversation from farmer, we were letting it organically grow and not spend a lot of in a marketing because in farmers always like spending money in marketing is our experience that you lose trust. Let them spread in their community, use it, give us feedback, we'll improve because like soon we are like next one we're going to launch like a market analytics on the app. So now farmer can come uh, talk to the app and ask like what is the Monday's price in Nasik yesterday, what was the average price, what was like last year's based month with the or grapes prize in like this Monday. So we want to develop this feature and then get a farmer acquired, not, uh, you know, worry right now on spending a lot on the acquisition part. How do you get funded? Uh, it has been bootstrapped by me. Like, uh, 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 this is my fourth startup, basically. Uh, last uh, startup got acquired and like 2019, I started this one. So right now, like basically bootstrapping it. And we now started getting revenue. So by this month, we have now revenue from uh, two, like two big customers. So hopefully, like you know, we are a very small, and nimble team. And so what's your pricing or charging mechanism? Charging. So it's kind of uh, like this uh, data curation part is something we kind of work with depending on the what kind of knowledge base the private company have. Like the, so, and then for the pilots, like right now, something like fifteen to twenty thousand dollar, like for like say five hundred or thousand farmers, they want to taste it out. But later on, it will be usage based. Right now, if something is voice to voice, end to end, it's like a four, around four rupees, which will cost go down once we start using our own model. And one for English to English text. Like, so it's a one to four, depending on which language you choose, voice text. And we want to like work so the, that particular usage cost go down. To farmers? No, for B2B companies, because they will pay in for us to be inside their app, right? So the farmers are never going to be charged? From our website, not. If the uh, private company decide to ha have subscription in their website or their app, that's like their problem. They will pay us on the usage anyway. You're not going to ever charge for For right? my Kisane, like, that's never going to happen. We are going to enable conversational commerce once we hit uh, 
milestone, like let's say one million user, then I'm gonna enable conversation with commerce. So you suggest a passage I buy it from here. You don't have to go outside and copy paste in Google or download 20 different applications right now available in market to find for delay, right? We can just do it from inside our app. The business model is still under discovery. How are you gonna charge to the corporates? Uh, to the businesses, how are you gonna charge is still Corporates? Something. Yeah, yeah just what like, it's usage based basically. Okay. Thanks. Thank you so much. With this, we come to the end of the pitching session. Thank you to all the participants uh, for showcasing their solution today.